it's so funny about the I mean John Sales was an alternative director so mm. it actually I was I was working with like kind yeah. it wasn't that I was going into again the, the mainstream of American filmmaking mm -hmm. or, or, or t movies of the week or that kind of thing mm -hmm. I was with an original creator Mm -hmm. who wrote and directed his, his own work, mm -hmm. to me he was like the people I knew in Canada. Like right. he was like, you know, we, we, we found each other in that way. There's something very Canadian about John Sayles, isn't there? Well, you know, he, I, I, I don't know. To me he's like it's Thomas Jefferson or something. He's one of the great Americans. He has mm -hmm. all of that stuff, the integrity mm -hmm. and the individuality and all those things. But, you know, and from there I could have gotten more film work, there's no question. And I remember when I was pretending to myself that I was going to do this thing, I was going to move to the States and I was going to follow this mm -hmm. upwardly mobile trajectory. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was with, uh, 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 having a meeting with a manager mm -hmm. or something, an agency, I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And they said, are you going to move to the States? I said, oh yes. Mm -hmm. uh, New York first? I said, yeah, I'd like to live in New York. And they said, uh, and the one guy looked at me, he said, don't you have anything to leave? And I went, fuck yes. <laughs> I've got lots to leave. Right. I've yeah. got a culture. I've mm -hmm. got a rich, rich community. I've got the world around Pazamara. I've got a place that supports my artistry and my work and my invention. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot to leave. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it was like this Judas, mm -hmm. you know, um, tongue said, oh no. Mm -hmm. But inside, I was going, it, it, it struck me to the core. Interesting. I wasn't young enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was in my mid-20s, mm -hmm. and I did have something to leave. And I also was this belief that we were all part of nation building. Right. That we were creating this country mm -hmm. which was better than any other country in the world. Yeah. That if you went overseas, which is not true now, and said you were Canadian, mm -hmm. people would actually say to me, it's the best country. Mm -hmm. And I, it's so weird to talk about that now, mm -hmm. when we have lost that status, and I feel we kind of kept alive this sense, and I say we as if I had something to do with it, but there was a communal sense that we were about something and creating something. Mm -hmm. The art, but the art in context of the of the whole nation, and that's whether you were doing the weird shit or 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 more like Thompson's populist work, mm -hmm. and and that makes it very hard in the present day. When my friends say what happened to Canada, I just go, well, we won for a while and then we lost. Mm -hmm. Not lost in terms of does Canada or have an identity or tell its own stories or any of that but there was a larger vision of what we were going for, which was around for a while, you know? Mm -hmm. Lasted about 20 years. It's funny, you know, it's something that it's hard to articulate. But Very we just hard. knew, it was just there back then, right? It was just like a bedrock of your experience here. That's right, here. that's right. And I think it's unfortunate that um, maybe we should have spent more time articulating it, you know? We, we did articulate it, we you did. know? It uh, was articulated. It mm -hmm. was part of the Council of Canadians and, mm -hmm. the, you know, like a whole series, huge uh, poets and painters and, mm -hmm. um, and even administrators and uh, mm -hmm. everyone part of this. And, and I didn't leave. Mm -hmm. You came back. I came back and I got a lot of film and TV work, like the Americans would hire me when they came up because mm -hmm. I had an American cue or something. Right, of course. And so I was able to do interesting, I worked with Denis Arcand, I worked with Barton Lovat, you know, I worked with some interesting people. What was your work with Denis Arcand? Uh, I did um, Empire Inc. Okay. And uh, so I, you know, I got to be the ingenue, but by this point I wasn't a sort of faceless ingenue, I was mm -hmm. me. And that, and I was an interesting ingenue for film, and I and I spoke the language well. Mm -hmm. But I knew that to actually make the impact or to have it count, I should leave. And every every year, my agent would say, "We're going down to L.A. for pilot season." I would go, "Yes," mm -hmm. and then I would write, yeah, and write and I'm write right. and write. And it, once more, there was this separation between an exterior very conventional exterior mm -hmm. 
and a nutty <laughs> interior that was not conventional and was never going to be able to follow that path. And I went through a lot of hell about that because then they don't hire you anymore. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And other people go to the States and pretty soon you're really auditioning. I used to walk in, I already had the part, you know? It was yeah. not, I didn't, didn't ever have to play the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't ever have to claw my way to the top. It mm -hmm. was never like that. And then, all of a sudden, you're a playwright, whatever that is, mm -hmm. and an actor, and it's not. And so, you know, I did kick myself around the block many times, and I've gone round that decision many times. Mm -hmm. And now finally I'm over it mm. and proud of the decision as opposed to, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> well, of, uh, of course, as the, speaking for all of Canada, uh, I can say thank God oh. you didn't leave. Yeah, and I can say with all confidence that everybody would agree with me. At the same time, I, I do know that pull, and the pull is something very, it's about money and it's about appreciation. And you know what, like when I was down there, the Americans, if they are really into you or if they smell profit from you, then they are serious as a heart attack. And things move. And things move. Things move quickly. Yeah. Which is something you can't get over mm -hmm. in Canada. Yeah. And Megan Pierre was something that moved quickly. It was yeah, like exactly. just a minute. What is this pace? Yeah. But in the States, boy, and because mm. there you know there's a window for yeah. people, which is when they're young. Yeah. And you grab them. Yeah. You know? And then it's like Yeah, yeah it was she... very quick. Okay. We're gonna I like you've got so many acting credits too in film. And I can't go through all of them. I do want to talk to you about the Marriage Bed, which is my favorite film. Oh, and you, yes. And you, every yes, time that I was bring fun. it up, with you and with Lane, you're all like, yeah. Andrew, shut up about the Marriage Bed. No, 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 no. I will go. I will go into it. Please do, because I, I love the film. I love your performance in it. But just talk about how that experience happened, just sort of quickly. Well, <laughs> so what happened was is that I had this rich, rich life that was part of the community around Pasm Ryan and all of mm -hmm. the uh, what were called alternate theaters then. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to have best of both worlds. I was mm -hmm. able to go and do a film and TV gig, make some money, and then work mm -hmm. at Pasm Ryan for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And so Lane and I were still part of this group, and so Lane played Hamlet and I played Ophelia. Right. And then later on, we did, went on a tour to mm -hmm. uh, England together. Um, and then, when the film thing came up, Martin Levatt wanted me to play in this, in this film called The Marriage Bed, which still comes up after all these many years. And it's mm -hmm. a Christmas film about a gal who has, is pregnant with her third kid, and her husband leaves her because he just can't take it. It's just like overwhelming the baby and the things, mm -hmm. and they're young. And, and um, I ended up playing that lead with Martin Levatt, who I love and who mm -hmm. I worked with two or three other times, mm -hmm. and Lane was the husband. Mm -hmm. And so we did the whole thing. We mm -hmm. got married, I gave birth on the floor. Um, mm -hmm. But what was great is just, I was very used to having big parts, mm -hmm. you know? Well, mm -hmm. you get used to the crew, and you get yeah. used to the world of it. And, yeah. and, and I just, and I was able to feel the camera, mm -hmm. which I didn't know because of all the theater experience. And I was afraid I was too big for the camera. Right. And I just seemed to understand it. But that was a really fun shoot. And lots of great people. Claire Coulter was in it. We had all kinds of little one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. And acting with Lane was great. We're so used to each other, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. It was just so normal. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it looks like that all things going well, that we'll be acting together again in, in um, a play that's going on next year called Heaven Above, Heaven Below. Okay. So that's after first. a big thing. But anyway, so I did a lot of TV and film then. Mm -hmm and was able, in the breaks, to write the next play, which okay. was Odeon on Paradise. Yeah. That's and so then good about that. the play after that, which was a huge journey, which took me even farther away from mainstream careerism, mm. which was the work I did with Maria Campbell and, and the book of Jessica yeah. and Jessica. Mm -hmm. So... I know, you've got so many... many my ones. creative life was taking me away from that other life, but I mm -hmm. just... It was so strange and it was so hard to, mm -hmm. to go with, it's like the inner forest. Right. Yeah. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the inner thing that says, this is what you are dedicated to. This is the gift you have to go with. Mm -hmm. and, um, and being, frankly, really c conflicted for a long time about that. Mm -hmm. So my creative life, the writing I was doing, the theater I was doing, was taking me farther and farther away. Mm -hmm. Which is, 
I mean, I, like I said, you know, for us, that's a great thing, you know, because you gave us Odeon Paradise now. And there, you know, there are many legends, some that we can talk about, some that we can't. Um, oh, we can talk about them. Oh, really? Oh, good.